All right, apparently I'm live. Hi, hey everyone. How are you all doing? It's been a while since I did one of these. Actually, um, well, that's a great start, right? <laughs> the last one I did was uh, January 2020. Um, and then, you know, COVID happened and stuff, and I stopped streaming at that time. But yeah, hope you're all doing well. Uh, let me know where you are in the world today. And um, the idea I have in mind for this video is going to be... All right. Um, first thing, actually, I have a question for you because I haven't streamed in a long time. How are the volumes and is the video stuttering? Because it is stuttering on my end. That's my first question I have for you before I go any further. Perhaps I'll play some guitar. Alabama. Sounds good, thank you. Uh, not much stutter. Okay. It says I got an excellent connection now, but a moment ago it said my bitrate was too slow. So, uh, yeah. You know, we'll work out the kinks, right? Hey, the Telecaster nerd. <laughs> excellent, right. So, um, yeah. If I enjoyed this, and if you enjoy this, perhaps I'll, I will do this like a, a weekly thing. Uh, so I plan to do about, you know, half an hour to an hour. We'll see how it goes. And um, I thought I'd try to teach you at least something, something that you might find useful. And then, uh, you know, just take some questions from all of you. So, all right, uh, from Malaysia. Excellent, yeah, Thursday, 9 a.m. Yeah, it's 10, 10 a.m. South Korea for me. So I'm a bit rusty. I'm not, I, well, I've been up since like half six, but you know. Um, I literally just sat down to play guitar, so. <laughs> All right then, so, um, yep, I'm using OBS streaming software. Uh, I'm gonna try this out, see how it goes. And uh, the, I put the, um, let's learn this cool chord progression. And this is basically taken from, if you remember the, um, you know, the Japanese, that, that Japanese uh, chord progression that um, you hear all the time, that pop one. Uh, so I thought I'd break down what I did in my version and then uh you know teach you it teach you the chords and then um also something to go along with those chords so we're going to look at uh, how we can use those chords and perhaps use some uh, arpeggios to make some kind of riffs and licks and you know try and make it sound um like math rock or whatever it is that um you want to play i keep looking at here because i got a webcam up here but i'm actually using my um dslr using a uh, plugin app and um, is the, I just want to know, is the video um, stuttering for you or is it smooth? Because there's no point me trying to show you guitar if it keeps, <laughs> keeps stuttering all about the place. Is smooth on your end? Excellent. Okay, well, Mexico, hello, and New Zealand, oh, wow, excellent. <laughs> All right, so thanks for joining everyone. Um, so that chord progression, that Japanese one, perhaps you had a, a play around with it. Okay, there's a tiny burst, a smooth for you. All right then, well, this is the first time I've done this in a while, so, uh, it, you know, if I do it again, um, I'm planning to do this every, every Wednesday, which is um, Tuesday for, Tuesday night for most people. Uh, but at that time, yeah, next time, sorry, I'll try and um, you know, see if I can improve the latency or whatever. I've got it on low latency at the moment, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be helping all that much. Okay, so anyway, that chord progression, as you can see, I've got on the side of the screen here. Um, this one is a 4-5, four, four, ma major 4, dominant 5th. Uh, minor third and minor sixth progression. So, um, sounds like this. And all those chords go together quite nicely. And if you've had to play around with that one, perhaps, um, you know, you've written some stuff with it already. But I used it to create that, you know, that, um, I think I called it Diet Chun idea. 
and I had a lot of fun with that one. And uh, I took that chord progression, and, and um, you know, there was a lot of things it went through before it got to that final piece. Um, I tried to play it, perhaps. <laughs> That one. I would play it a lot better if I wasn't nervous and you were all watching me. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so that one, that's based around um, that's based around that chord that core progression I just shown you uh, that you can see on the side of the screen here. All right. Uh, nice, Jake. You've written a lot of stuff with it. <laughs> um, well, you don't owe me. Um, you you owe whoever I got that from, and I'm pretty sure just I kept hearing this progression everywhere online. So I was like, I searched for like common. Japanese chord progressions, and this is the one that came up. And it's used a lot in um, you know J-pop music. Um, so yeah, with that one, there's a lot of licks and stuff in between. I changed a few of the chords as well. So this first chord, the major seven, I just took out this note here, and uh, I'm using hybrid picking on this one as well. And then I have this lick. The idea for the song, sorry, came from Book by Chun, so you might notice the similarities <laughs> between the two. And um, so this lick here was, is based around um, a major arpeggio, uh, a major seven arpeggio. And I'm going to show you these arpeggios in a bit. And then I um, added this note in from the major scale for a bit of colouring. And then instead of playing this dominant chord, I went with the, you know, that straight major, um, you know, just a major triad chord that you can play there. But I took out the root and then I threw in this, um, this note up here. I think it's the sixth to give it a bit of tension. And then I did uh, some triplet stuff. The old wiggle stick to help out make that sound a lot cooler than it actually is, <laughs> and then we we came over to the this E minor chord. So we're going down the list from uh, top to bottom at the moment. Um, yeah, this one. If you know the full shape, then it, you know you'll play it like that. You would bar it with you know your index finger. Um, but I like to play it so using my middle finger. And then barring the rest with the uh, with my ring finger, like that. So I kept that chord pretty much the same in the progression. And then uh, we had this lick, right? Um, yeah. So with that one, it's all actually based around the the minor pentatonic. Uh, which shapes again? Yes. Yeah, so the um, the fourth shape of the minor pentatonic and the fifth shape. And uh, is that right? Could be wrong. In it. I wrote these things and then I forget about them, but that was definitely, I remember around um, using the minor pentatonics to put, uh, minor pentatonic uh, shapes to put um, a little lead lick together like that. And then I added um, a scale in from the minor scale, uh, a scale, a note in from the minor scale, apologies. And then that led to the last chord, so you see at the bottom, um, so that's going to be, um, this B flat minor seven chord, and I really need to check the intonation on this guitar. <laughs> and with this one, it's a cool trick. So if you play like any major or minor chord, or um, let's say you use a dominant seven chord or a minor seven flat five chord, uh, we're talking within being diatonic within a key, then. If you find the chord within that key a fifth higher, then if you tap that one, it always sounds nice. So 
examples always help. So with this one, this is B flat, right? This is your first, the B flat. This is your fifth here, uh, the F. So you know this note's here, so this is an easy way to find it. So find the F down here. Um, <laughs> all the way down the bottom here. But I know in this key that this is going to be a F minor chord. So now, so if you notice on the tab, if you've learned this, that this is just the, the, the outline actually of, um, of uh, that F minor seven chord there. So that's a trick you can use. Uh, so let's say if you were playing like a C major seven chord, the fifth is here. So this is your root C. Your fifth here is G. Uh, so you'd come down here and then you'd find uh, G. So in the key of C, sorry. So that's gonna be a C, D, E, F, G, uh, a dominant, sorry, in that case. Let's go with the key of G and switch it around. So if you were to play this. The um, G major seven shape here while holding the C chord. Uh, it's easy to remember that and it sounds pretty cool, right? So that was another technique I used um, in that introduction there. So. Uh, that's a really quick walkthrough of how I formulated that riff. So it's all that idea, sorry, that, that Chan kind of idea. I was inspired by the song Book by Chan, and then I took that chord progression, I twisted the chords a little bit, and then I put little lead lines and stuff in between. Obviously, it didn't sound like that at first. I had to mess around with it quite a bit to get it to what I wanted it to sound like. Uh, but I was happy with the result in the end, and then I did um, the... Uh, the entire song uh, with my friend Vince and um, you know extended parts and uh, that was fun so um, yeah so I'm gonna teach you this chord progression in a, in a different key and then some arpeggios that you can use along with each chord to hopefully help you out and inspire you to uh, write some stuff so I'm just gonna check out the the chat again for a bit so uh, okay Elvo uh, Sean hey just wanted to pass by and say thank you. I started learning guitar mid quarantine, and your videos have been super helpful, especially beginner math rock riffs. Excellent, thank you. Sean Davis, good to see you. <laughs> good to see me streaming, thanks. Um, Jake, yeah, our sevenths always just magic. Uh, they are, they sound great. Like, um, you know, let me tune. Right. Um, I'm using the middle pickup position because they're reverse wound, these pickups, so you don't get... Well, there's, I'm not really getting any interference anyway, right? Um, so, yeah, like if you were to play like a F major 7 there. My favorite is the major 9 chord, as you, you may already know. I like the major nine because it's the you can take off um, you take off your little finger here. You get that six nine chord. Yeah, which sounds cool. Right, yeah. I digress, so <laughs> uh, I get excited about things too easily. Right, um, so where were we? So Sean, thanks. My my friend Martin's in the chat, going to be trolling me. I guess I've not read this, but I guess it's going to be trolling me. <laughs> so, hey, Martin, hope you're doing well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I can't help you with that. I, I think you need a plumber. Okay. Chibank cat, real music starts at seven. Okay. Uh, you're talking to each other there. Thoughts on Hot Mulligan? i um, not really heard of them. Jack and... Thanks for loving the content. That's excellent. Super scales do big scales. Okay. All right. Um, is Isaac with a separation in the middle? So, uh, 
do you have any proximate mounting gigs? So no mounting gigs, uh, but some exciting news. We actually are writing our, well, recording, sorry, not writing. We've done the writing part. We're recording our next album. So Joel is uh, back in the States at the moment. So while he's there, he's got some backing tracks that Ali and I recorded a couple of weeks back. So he's going to record the drums to them. Uh, wiggle stick merch <laughs> when <laughs> I don't know I'll, I'll see what I can throw together uh, okay minor minor 11 is a great chord and uh, favorite alternative tuning is probably going to be D A E A C sharp E I haven't really experimented with a lot of them to be honest with you though uh, Telecaster nerd okay so I'm going to come back to questions in a little bit I just want to get this little lesson bit out of the way first. So with the magic of OBS, let me let me slide over here and I think now I should be able to there we go. So you'll see some magic happening on screen. Right. Okay, back over here. There we go. So now um we've got the same chord progression again. The four, five, three, six, one, uh, but I've put it into the key of um, C major. I think that's what I did anyway. So now, basically, we're going to fret lower than the the example I just gave you. And it's always good to just do stuff in C major because of the um, the absence of um, you know accidentals, so sharps and flats and stuff. <laughs> All right then, <laughs> Harry Potter scooting things around. <laughs> I'm just like taking more of me out of the shot. So by the end of this video, you won't actually see see me or the guitar. It'd just be a a wall of um of chords. <laughs> right. So now we've got this F major seven, uh, a G seven, so dominant. And I'm going to keep it all on the same string, on the A string. E minor, 7, and and A minor, 7. Practically, it'd be better to um, you know, try and keep the chords as close as possible to make it sound smoother. But uh, with the arpeggios that I'm going to teach you, I think we're just going to keep it all from the same string for now. Um, yep, so again, so we can see from the top here, F major 7, G7, uh, sorry, E minor 7, and then uh, the uh, A minor 7 there. All right, so, um, yeah, I think you can handle that, right? You know that part. Um, and, you know, you can mess around with these chord shapes, um, take notes out of them. That's one part, of course. Uh, then the next step would be to, if it, well, if you want to go that way, it's completely up to you. It's your own style, what you want to play, okay? I'm, I'm not trying to force anything on you here, but just trying to give you some tools uh, that you can work with for songwriting. So, uh, arpeggios. Arpeggios sound great because they use all of the, um, you know, the notes that are within the chord. So... <laughs> And now I'm not playing with telly. It, it, it is over there. I've taken it out of the shot now because the um, th uh, the thing is uh, the thing I'm showing the the um, the tabs with with the, with the guitar thing. <laughs> you know, English is English is difficult, right? So um, <laughs> you wouldn't think I'm an English teacher, right? So yeah, it's over there on uh, with the PV and um, the new Gibson that I've um, yet not yet um, shown you. But notice the, the white Telecaster's gone. Um, I decided to sell the parts caster, well, sell the parts of the parts caster. Um, I'm going on a tangent here, I know. I'll get back in a second. Um, you know, they, I didn't need two tellies that were pretty much identical. So if I get another one in the future, um, it will be something probably with a maple neck and uh, perhaps a, a humbucker in the neck or something like that. So, yeah, now I'll bring over these arpeggios so we're losing more of the screen here. Mustangs are great. 
good fun. It looks small, right? And it, it is a, a much shorter scale. And I've, uh, I've, I've never really um, tried to use a vibrato, vibrato system before. This is endless fun, I tell you. A, a wiggle stick, I should say. <laughs> nice, nice rosewood progression. Is that... Does, Ch does the song Rosewood by Chon use this progression too then? Love that song, by the way. Okay, so now um, now we've got the chord shapes. So ignore the very uh, far left that you've got there. So the G flat major 7, A flat 7. That was my original example. So now we're going on to this uh, F major 7, G7, E minor 7, A minor 7. And then next to it is the corresponding arpeggios starting from there. So the black notes that you see here are the other root notes. And then the rest of the notes around it are the um, are the notes that are within that chord. <clears throat> so in major seven chords we have, uh, sorry, just seven chords in general, we have four notes. So notice how no note is repeated with these arpeggios. So they can feel quite limiting at first. However, you need you need to know these and then you fill in the gaps uh, with you know extra notes for, for coloring basically. These are the notes that are gonna sound most pleasing uh, to your ears. So for example, if we take the F major seven chord, so our arpeggio. That's the arpeggio shape there. Um, so I, w what I tend to do uh, is just, uh, I, I'll spend, I'll take like just all of the major arpeggios and I'll spend, you know, a week or so just messing around with those. But in application that we're looking at here, um, I'm only showing you one of the arpeggio so shapes that are available. Do uh, Please note that there are uh, five that you could possibly use and start uh, two that start from the, um, from the low E string. There's two available there that have a root note there. There's two arpeggios that start from the A string that you could use. And there's also um, one that connects all back together, starting from the D string. And these are all in that, um, you know, if you haven't checked it out, but the Guthrie Govan, um, the first book that he put out, there's all the arpeggios in there. And these, these are basically what they're taken from. And it's super, super useful for writing. So anyway, I digress back to it. Um, that F major seven arpeggio. So there's potential there already. You know, to start being musical with uh, arpeggios and your and your licks. And then we can move up to the um, the G7, our dominant chord. And now we have the arpeggio there, right? So again here, these are all like A string roots as you can hear. Um, so, whoops. You can hear that chord, right? Because these are obviously notes taken from the chord. So, um, very crude examples I'm showing you here, but you know, the more you f mess around and find little patterns that work for you, you know, you can create little cool rick, li ricks, licks uh, that go along with your chords. So, there's the um, F1. I'm going to tune again. That's that's the. Uh, the downfall of the Mustang. <laughs> I haven't played it in a in a about a week, so it's been very fickle again. There we go. And on to the uh, E minor seven. So we got the shape there, right? So you'll notice that this one. It's like the fourth fourth um, minor pentatonic shape, basically missing um, the sixth uh, the sixth there. 
so you're already quite familiar with that shape as well. So, um, so again, there's potential there again for creating licks. And then we come to the A minor seven again. So we can just use the same shape here, right? You can hear that progression just from that lead line. So, if you're just a guitarist on your own, you can, you know, combine this with a uh, with the chord shapes. If you've already got like an established harmony or a chord progression, then you could, you know, use these arpeggios to play licks over them. Super useful as well if the progression is moving quickly, right? We can just you, once you've cemented these into your brain, you know where they are under your fingers, and you can play along with that progression. So I'm hoping that makes sense. It's not going over your head. I, I try to keep things simple. I may not be the best ex uh, at explaining things, but I'm getting better as uh, I go along, of course. So, um, <laughs> right, just looking at... <laughs> I wish I knew standard tuning. <laughs> that, that's, that's a new thing, right? <laughs> Excellent. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, hello, if you've if you've just joined as well. Ah, I'm just checking my streaming rate now, and it's much better. So, I don't think we have any any jumps anymore. So, please, 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 um, practice uh, learning these arpeggios because you only need to learn the the major, minor, dominant, and if you want, you can do the minor seven flat five. But they, you know, they're not really used all that much. Or it depends if you if you want to use them, of course. But a major and minor super important there um let's say i'd like that chump progression and you were asked to write some lead along with that or over the top of it the first thing you should be really going for is you know the arpeggios to out outline the chord and then you can start to add in those um you know those extra uh notes to add a bit of yeah, a bit of flavor, a bit of randomness in there. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. So uh, yeah, um, that's the, the lesson for this video. I got through it in time. I wanted it to get f get through it before half past, and which I've done. Um, so yeah, now um, I'm dedicated to you. I hope you did enjoy that. Okay, progressions improvised, and yeah, two, five, one, so jazz one. So again, um, you just use the, uh, the arpeggios at first, yeah. Hey, thanks, Casey Williams. Uh, yeah, I do. I do know of a uh, good game. Help with that style tabs. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So this video will be available online after this stream is finished. So if you want to come back and you can watch that bit again, um, perhaps I'll upload this. I forget the name. What what's it called? Um, neck diagrams. That's what I'm using here. So perhaps I'll upload this to my website or something. And I I still really need to get around to fixing the website. There's um, a lot of problems with that. Okay. So back over to OBS. Now, with my magic powers, I will um, make this all go away. There we go. <laughs> perhaps you want it left up. It's better than just seeing the corner of my room, right? <laughs> Hey, thanks, Tube App and Cat. Excellent stuff. So, um, yeah, this is my studio behind me. So whenever you see me make a video, it's 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 crammed into that corner there. <laughs> and then here's my uh, bunch of shirts that uh, <laughs> that um, uh, you know I try out on different different videos and stuff like that. So, <laughs> all understood. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, did you guys enjoy that? W would you like? If I was to do this weekly, would you like a little lesson kind of thing? Uh, I'm going to move over here a bit. Um, little lesson thing at the start. Was that fun? There we go. And I might invest in getting a um, you know a capture card in that case, so the video quality is a, a bit better. I mean, this is okay, I guess, but um, you know you could see things a bit clearer. All right, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, yeah, just, just throw them down uh, in the chat. I plan to go to about 11 o'clock, well, you know, 25 minutes from now. So excellent. Thank you for the feedback. I have to I have to wait for this delay. Yeah, uh, Casey, I, I have a Discord. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, saying that you enjoyed it as well. Um, Discord, so you can get 
if you become a Patreon, um, the lowest tier is a dollar, but that gets you into the um, the Discord server, which is called a Super Super Happy Best Friends. <laughs> it's just uh, the name I gave it. But there's many different channels in there. We have like a math chat, uh, gear talk. Uh, you know, share your work as well. Um, nice little community. It's not. It's not that busy. There's. I mean, there's quite a few of us in there, but um, it's not really a. Um, you know, overwhelming. People keep writing messages all the time. Kind of Discord server. So, if you want to become part of that, um, I put it behind a paywall to prevent that kind of thing. So, if if you sign up for the um, one dollar Patreon, you can join on there. And at the end of the month, we also have a. Um, a Discord uh, hangout as well, which uh, which actually we had last. It's at the end of the month on 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 Wednesdays. Uh, so last last month I was just sat on my own for an hour before anybody anybody joined, but I, I practiced arpeggios quite a lot, so it wasn't wasted time. All right. Well, I, I, I'm happy with this feedback. So hopefully it was easy to follow. Um, I didn't ramble on too much. Yeah. That that's the beauty with when I make a video, right? I, I ramble on a lot like that, but I can just cut that stuff out. But <laughs> when it's live like this, uh, you get all the the in between parts as well. Yeah, I try to do it weekly. Um, I see I see if I can. It really depends if my work schedule um, allows it. Hey, okay, Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you bring your guitar next time. <laughs> Uh, my favorite guitar uh, after party uh, after party favorites okay uh, is the is the blue telly uh, for sure you know you know I, I know i bashed it in that video when i got the mustang but that was obviously all a obviously all a joke um i've had that one the longest time it's covered in dents it's got it's got its, it's got its charms it's actually the hardest guitar to play out of all my guitars but you know it just sounds i I've, I've never had a guitar sound that good yeah, so I'd say that's probably my favorite, but it's not like I don't love the others or like the others. Um, but with the, with the channel, it, I used to buy a guitar and then I will show you me unboxing it and um, trying it out and stuff. But I felt like I was just adding to the cycle of, you know, you need to buy more gear, buy more gear, buy. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to do that. So, because what about if I didn't end up liking that guitar and stuff? So, guitars now, like you can see, I got the the Les Paul that I haven't shown you yet. Um, you know, I've had that for a month, and I, I've just been playing it, see what I like about it. If I'm gonna keep it, then I'll show it you. If I'm not gonna keep it, then you know, I'll sell it on. And I think that's probably a more um, more ethical way to do this right instead of just like check out this piece of gear it's amazing and then you know next week i don't have it because i sold it like that's you know i don't like that right and I, i'm sure you don't like that so when i did the mustang as well I, i'd had it for like two months or so before i even shown it to you and yeah i'll definitely hang on to this one for a while and the yeah the less Paul the verdict on that it's got the best finish i've ever seen on a guitar and it, it just looks black from here but um it's this like uh nebula finish i, I don't I, maybe i'll grab it in a minute and i'll show you if you're if you're interested i'm not sure if i could get it under this light but it's a cool guitar all right um sorry i've not been paying attention to the chat i've just been looking at myself <laughs> very narcissistic of me okay um okay yeah weekly we got to there um okay uh ben Dan, um they ask uh, what are some books you recommend about math rock well i don't think there's that many that exist there's if you're talking strictly learning about guitar then my my book would be useful for that a shameless plug of course but if you're interested in the learning the um the tapping technique specifically then you, you could should check out uh i haven't got it here but um marcus menas book his um i forget what the name is of it is but that that one's quite good it gets difficult really quickly just keep that in mind but you can definitely learn the technique from that one um books about math rock there's not really books probably a few documentaries and stuff online perhaps people can recommend stuff better than i can uh, I, you know, I've got quite a few guitar books, but they're definitely not geared towards learning math rock. They're just learning, um, you know, 
just general rock and blues and jazz <laughs> in general maybe learn jazz you know that's what it's just that's what math rock is right jazz jazz for lazy people perhaps <laughs> emo jazz <laughs> when you when you look at the chords and stuff <laughs> but great question uh, yeah i really don't know okay um right so questions are coming in thick and fast excellent I think I jumped over a few here. All right, so sleep par par uh, parallelis par <laughs> Polaris Polaris monster. Well, I'm tongue tied today. Um, are you a fan? Uh, yeah, I do know the Death Note OST. Um, I've not listened to it in many years though, but yeah, I, that sounds cool. Clouding your skies, they ask, uh, what about math rock made you want to start making it? What like you attracted to you to it? Okay, that's a great question. So I've alluded to this in uh, other live streams, but they were a long time ago. But to me, for me, it was when I was at college, uh, not university, but um, you know, high school equivalent, if, we, if we're talking American uh, education system. So uh, you, when I was at college, I can't remember how, but I discovered, um, I think the biggest one was The Fall of Troy. They'd just come out with, yeah, 2006, a doppelganger at that time. And then, you know, that was like blowing people away, like especially guitarists, you know, new, very new kind of thing at that time. Um, yeah, so learning stuff off that. My best friend as well was a huge fan at the time. And, you know, I, I would go around to his house and, he had like learned the album back to back and he had this um yeah it was just cool to see and then it was like i got into like um more like at the drive-in from that as well we did a few covers at we, we did the one we did arc arsenal in in the band we were doing but that's where i started from i would say and then that led me like going from like 2000 to, talking like 2007 to 2010 is where i was watching a lot of British uh, math rock bands. So I would go and watch like Blackfish and Colour. Uh, there was another band in Birmingham called Shapes that I really enjoyed, and the uh, Tube Lord from Kingston in London. This this was my introduction to us. It was very those bands either like kind of heavy kind of math style if you're talking like Blackfish and Shapes, and then there was the math pop style of thing with Colour, which you know became Tangled Hair. This that was my basically my my journey to it, and then I I left the UK after that scene pretty much was dying down, like late two thousand and ten. So I, two thousand twelve, I came over to Korea, and I've, I've been here since. So I've kind of been out of that loop. So all of my interaction has been on like this side of the world. So suddenly more with the the Japanese Asian side of math rock. And with my band Mountains, um, yeah, and just talking to people online like you as well, and uh, just generally following you know pages like the the Fecking Bahamas and um, wh whatever's wherever you can get math rock news from <laughs> these days. But yeah, great question. So hopefully I answered that one for you. Um, yeah, uh, Telecaster, yeah, you're more than welcome to tag me if any of you want to cover anything that i've done and tag me on instagram or you, you if you want to take something that i've written and reharmonize it or you know make some beats of it and stuff most of the stuff that i record i do record to a metronome which which helps i guess yeah just feel free to just feel free to tag me that's that's fine i'm, I'm happy i'm l always happy to see that kind of thing uh nate is it possible to tune the g string to a c or oh, so we're going g a b c yeah i guess so I probably use a really light gauge of string, though. You know, like in the um, in the um, animals tab book. Um, ah, I was been looking at for ages the the gravity pick, and it was in here. So thank you very much, Nate. You helped me find my missing pick. <laughs> um, tuning. There's a page on tuning, and let's see if I can get that up for you. Um, at the bottom here, it, it has um, Tim's recommendation. So if you're tuning a string up, you should use this gauge of string. So in this case, 
what you would do is um, buy all individual strings. But I only recommend this if you're going to leave that guitar in, in that tuning, you know, for a, quite a while. If you're just doing it to learn a song and then you're going to put it back into standard, then you should be fine. No problems there. But if you're going to leave it there for a long time and you're worried about twisting the neck or all these things, especially the more, um, the higher you tune, the more, more um, strain has been put on the neck, right? But if you're tuning other strings down, then there's the worry about twisting the neck. But in my experience of from doing like um, any of the tunings in this book, like I, I covered five of the riffs from this book. I just used all standard set of strings, nine gauge. And I didn't have any problems with that. And whenever I've used like FACGCE, just used nine gauge. Same with, if I use DAEA C sharp E, I think I was using like a hybrid set because of that, you know, tuning the, the D, D string down. So it wasn't like really floppy. Uh, yeah, totally up to you. If you feel like, if you're really worried about that kind of thing, then perhaps go and buy individual strings. But as long as the tuning's not too, like, radical, <laughs> the change, you should be fine. Okay, maybe some other, uh, some of you can have some input as well. Um, yeah, but thanks for the question, Nate. Okay, Chance Hart, uh, can you suggest any of your videos that might help with uh, developing math rock melodies? Okay, right, so... Um, on my page, on my channel, there are a bunch of playlists. So I've kind of like tried to put them into like beginner categories or songwriting categories. So if you go and check there, um, you can just flick through the videos and just look for ones that have melodies. So the, the thing I just taught today in this video is very much that. So um, looking at the chord progression and using arpeggios, so writing melodies from that. Um, always start with the with the um you know the chord tones and then then you can mess with that and add in those extra notes or take out notes uh because it's math rock you know you, i don't know because it's not always going to be about what's the most smooth we're talking angular melodies here so we're talking bigger bigger jumps still diatonic you can still be diatonic and do a bigger jumps like a first to a seventh let's say um you know like uh you know that's you know first to a major seventh or perhaps if i come back a bit you can see better um i'll do it up here on the c so whenever you play a major seven chord that interval is in there right that tension <laughs> so Even though that's all diatonic, the jumps in the melody are, are quite big. Whereas like... Um, uh, with guitar, it's, yeah. If you're talking melodies on guitar, there's lots of potential for the big jumps. But if you're talking like doing a vocal melody, then there's generally like there's a le uh, you know a, uh, you would select a, a lesser amount of notes you can still do those big jumps and you know try and make them sound quite angular if you want to sound it you make it sound quite tense right um it, the more you space out this interval the less harsh it sounds like uh if you play that c major seven like this now that seventh clash I've moved it down here sounds really pleasing right Th that's what I based that um, you know that Yvette style uh, tapping idea on. what was it again around around that chord shape yeah so 
um yeah there should be videos on that i've definitely dedicated videos to like writing melodies and with guitar and i've also done one with vocal melodies i think um it looks like i'm wearing lipstick in that video <laughs> but i'm not um because i turned the the contrast up or something too high and didn't check it um after i uploaded it but oh well all right but thanks for the question um did i play any other instruments before guitar so, so that was from surf uh with <laughs> A -b 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 did I play any other instruments? No, um, I started on guitar. I didn't start playing till I was 14, 15 years old when I was at middle school. Uh, my, my best friend was playing drums in a band and like I discovered like Nirvana and Foo Fighters and I was like, this is really cool. Uh, I'll play guitar and it just went from there really. Um, no musical interests really at all uh, before that. So I kind of owe it all to my best friend to be where I am today because I think I'd still be listening to, um, in England, you got these like now CDs. So it had like uh, the, you know, the, the pop tunes that were popular at the time. <laughs> so I used to just listen to those, <laughs> if I'm honest, back then. No interest in learning an instrument. A great question. Thanks. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, I think I said already, tube amp cat. Okay. Um, but anyway, if I didn't, thanks uh, for the super chat. If that's what they're called anymore. What are they called now? Show your support for Let's Talk About Math. Okay, it doesn't tell you anymore. Right, show your support by giving him money. <laughs> right, um, Steve, what about the tuning stability of Mustang's tremolo? Okay, yeah, uh, hardtail. So, um, this is really loose. So, for example, if I come back a bit again, I only have to like tap it to make it go. In my experience, like if I was just to play like, um, it only goes a little bit out of tune. Just if that sounds really annoying. We go the opposite way. <laughs> it's barely gone out of tune, right? So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Especially like I used, um, I forget what it's called now. Um, Music Nomad, uh, tune it. Every string change. So this is like a, a lubricant. Um, I'll put that up there. But with that, so I put that in the nut slots and on the uh, tree, string trees here. And then on the uh, saddles as well. And since I did that, I've not really had much problems with, with, with the tuning stability that way. But thanks, uh, thanks for the super chat. Thanks for the question. I do, I think I do prefer hardtails, but this is this is a hell of a lot of fun. I've never really used whenever I had a strat, never really used the um the wiggle stick. <laughs> the whammy whammy bar or whatever you call it. Um yeah. So, but since I got this, this is this is all I do. And it's it's ever so much fun. Okay. Uh I you liked did you like the white telly after party? I I've still got the pickups. Um where are they? Oh in a box. <laughs> So I'm trying. I'm trying to sell them, but the, the the what was in that white telly were like a original, original Telecaster pickups. Uh, those ones. So these are like basically the twangiest of Telecaster pickups you can get. And um, selling them online, someone contacted me yesterday. Is like, have you got any demos of them? So I was like, oh yeah, here's here's the one video, and I had it in the middle position he's like oh, i want to hear what the neck and the bridge sounds like and i was like oh, i can't do that for you sorry <laughs> only the middle position but yeah they're not in the guitar right so how could i show him um so he said they sounded too twangy i was like they are 
like original 52 pickups they're going to sound that way so unfortunately he didn't buy them um but yeah that guitar yeah i put together as a, a parts caster and um i don't know if you've made a parts caster before but it was just like um something was getting at me it's like this isn't all stock <laughs> at the same time i know that sounds bad but i was like i just want and i've got a guitar that's already like that with a blue telecaster you know the um I had a Pau Farrow fretboard that's got rosewood, but they were pretty much the same guitar. So I uh, decided, you know, I don't need two of the same Telecasters pretty much. And um, I'm trying to keep it limited to five guitars that I have. So, yeah, uh, over there, the, the PV is like, you know, one of the first guitars I got when I was 14, 15. So that's never going anywhere. Um and it sounds cool, you know. It's cheap guitar, but sounds great. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So, um, so someone from Japan, I guess. I can't read your name. Apologies. Can you make mid OSIMO riffs in regular tuning? You sure can. I think that's what most of them were done in, to be honest, back in the early days. When you go to things like uh, Algernon Cadwallader, uh, I'm ne I, I never say that right, so um, apologies. Uh, yeah, then then we're getting like different tunings and uh, you know American football, but um, yeah, I, I've all of the like Midwest emo stuff that I've made has um, always been a standard, pretty much. So if I have a video and I don't mention what the tuning is, um, it's just probably uh, well, it's going to be in standard. Especially with the open strings in like in that song uh, Persimmon I did. Um That's all in standard. Uh Especially that chord, the A, A slash whatever chord. Sounds beautiful. Or if you want to start somewhere, that, that E major 7 chord. You know, I, actually, I did a video about this, right? So what's the most... What's the most Midwest emo sounding chord in standard tuning? So if you search for that video, uh, you can get a bunch of ideas from from that one. But thanks for the question. Oh, the Mustang is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, Midnight Rive. That would be cool. Uh, Ryan noticed the, the Gibson was pretty sparkly. Okay. Um... Proto Dodo, uh, just popping by. What would you say the most definitive math rock album is? Um, if I, if anyone ever asks me what should I listen to first, I always recommend two. Uh, like, well, I could recommend three, but I don't know because it's just so many different branches of it. <laughs> um, always recommend American Football LP One. I think especially if you haven't heard math rock before, that's quite you know a friendly introduction sounds nice but it's got a lot of our time and stuff going on right a lot of counterpoint and that and then i'd recommend probably um don cab um i forget the name of it now but the album cover that looks pretty much exactly the same because it's green because <laughs> uh, I, I love that record and that's that's definitely one where you can get like a good taste of either side and if you wanted some in between then perhaps go with like animals by ttng yeah, they're probably free. I would recommend to someone who's who's starting, who hasn't heard math rock before. I know your question was about definitive one, but they they are kind of albums that everybody knows. You know, I I did um a search on Spotify recently, you know, looking at like a lot of math rock bands and which ones were listened to the most, and um yeah, those those records were were definitely up there. All right, well thanks for the question and uh, thanks for 
thanks for popping by. Hopefully you're still here to, for me to get to your question. Um, I haven't tried a Strandberg. Um, I would like to try one though, but I've never really seen one over here. Uh, Kate, Christian Hoover, do you think there are habits or anything that hold guitarists back? Um, yeah, I well, you know, that's that's a whole that's a big subject, right? Uh, if I was to try and say it, try to summarize everything, then perhaps I would recommend. Um, you know, just making sure that you have goals and things that you are practicing. Learn the techniques that you want to use. So if you want to use finger tapping, learn the technique. Hybrid picking is super useful. I use that all the time. Learn that technique. It really depends on what, you are, what, your, what your purpose is, what your goals are with learning guitar. So get those in line first. Otherwise, it's like we're writing. You know, if you make a purpose statement for writing, then you're going to stay on track and you're less likely to go off on different tangents. So have a focused goal. Look at what you would need to achieve that goal. Always start with learning the technique and then learn songs and riffs that use that technique because that's fun and you pick things up through osmosis that way. And uh, just make sure that you're at least sitting down and practicing something that inter in uninterrupted um, every day. I try to do an hour. You know, over there, um, I got my stool and I have... Um, a music stand uh, and I'll just put the book on there and I'll try to sit there for half an hour to an hour and just practice things um, from whatever book it is I'm looking at so I'm not distracted by you know being on my computer because I always just end up oh that's this riff sounds cool I'll record it and make a video and then I yeah I'm not practicing anymore at that point but yeah that's a big question um, hopefully there's some information for you there Christian thanks All right thanks for the info thanks Brendan uh, okay Right, jazz. Hey, Ravenwolf from Mexico. Excellent. Um, apologies if, uh, if you're getting pops and crackles and stuff with the mic. Something I'll work on in the future. Right, um, I need to get going because I, I have a class to teach soon. Um, thanks for the answers. Okay, thanks, Chibamp Cat. Um, I haven't tried those tusk nut retainers. I have got some tusk uh, tusk picks. I know that's not what you asked, but <laughs> they're quite fun. <laughs> Paul, uh, thanks. <laughs> Good to see you, Paul. If you haven't checked out uh, Paul's podcast, I, I did um, I did an interview on his podcast, uh, the Don't, Don't Quit Your Day Job one. It was really good fun. So if you want to find out some background about the channel and myself uh, go and check that out uh, the Game Boy costume um, so that video uh, Rob recently joined Patreon and he said he was um, a, sorry the Patreon and the Discord server and he said he was working on a, a chip tune cover of the song Waves and uh, I was like okay I need that and I thought I'd play along with it and then I had this idea when I was waking up in the morning that like what about if I made a, a Game Boy SP advanced SP costume so then I went and found a bunch of boxes some find the right color paper you know, like a luminous yellow color and it went from there and it was being in that box you know I couldn't have the you know there's the cardboard's right behind you so I couldn't have the guitar on a comfortable angle so I had it on a strap like here <laughs> it was really difficult to play but really good fun really good fun Okay, um, okay, uh, Anger Child, about Chan, I'm starting to write a major again. Chan, Chan theory-wise, they have a lot of, like, dominant stuff in their music, like, um, and they change a lot of chords as well, like that. So that's like a minor 9, minor 11. And then instead of playing the minor 3rd, they make it like a, a seven sharp nine chord. You hear that progression all the time used uh, in their music and stuff that's similar. So there would be an example of if th this is how it would sound unaltered. But by sharpening that... So then you would adjust with whatever arpeggio scale that you use over that to include 
um, what would you call that? F flattened um, sharp minor third. Yes, yeah, the Hendrix chord, right? That that chord. Uh, is minor seven sharp nine? I think that's what it's called, right? I could be wrong. Seven sharp nine, right? Not a minor. Seven sharp nine chord. That's what it is. Yeah, uh, they use things like that. So dominant and also throwing in the like Lydian sound as well. Um, they they using a lot of modal stuff. Is, is probably what I'm getting at there. So I would I would start there. But learn learn some Chun riffs and pay attention to where things sound different. That's where the key is in their writing. I hope, I hope that's helpful for you. Um, I can't dedicate m much more time than that. Like I said, I need, I need to go in a minute. So, but thanks. Thanks for the question. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, Home Alone by Totoro. Love that album. Love that band. Music videos are always really, really good fun. Yeah, Don Caballero, What Burns Never Returns. That's the album. Fantastic album. Delivering the groceries at whatever BPM it is. It's one of my favorite tracks. Vietnam. Hey. Um... Okay, there's some bands up there. Yeah, okay. Uh, no bands to take advantage of. Yeah, it's a similar situation over here in Korea. Okay, um, right. <laughs> the one and only Steve. I'm not a math rock god, but, but thank you. <laughs> Just like guitar and math rock. And yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can use any guitar for math rock. Uh, <laughs> loud, loud fart, <laughs> 27. <laughs> yeah, any any guitar works, okay? If you're going to use a HSSS, usually if you're playing on clean, you're going to use the neck pickup. Uh, it's totally up to you. If you're using a bit of gain, then you get that Chon-esque sound by going the, um, you know, the in-between, out-of-phase positions. All right. Um, math rock scene in Korea, you've got Dabda, check those out and there's another band called Kotoba as well again pretty big these days they're two bands that I'd, I would recommend and um, I can't Kotoba is, is written in Korean so um, I think you, if you search for it in English, be C-O-T-O-B-A I think, I don't think they use a K for that one, alright thanks, uh, thanks for hanging thanks for hanging with me today, um, yeah um, I, yeah, like I said, I, I need to go because I need to get prepared for a, for a class. I, I teach online at a local university here. So um, thanks for joining, everyone. Really fun to hang out. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little lesson at the start. Perhaps I'll do this every week, so probably Wednesday at this time. Have a little introduction section teaching you something or something that you might find enjoyable. And then we'll have a little hang and ask questions. Sounds good to me, right? All right. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. New video um, will be this Friday, hopefully, if I get around to it. Um, enjoy your weeks. Please stay safe. And I'll see you all perhaps next week. I'll make, um, if, I'm, if I set up a live stream, you should get an announcement about it. Thank you, everyone. See ya. Uh, there, there's the camera. See you, everyone. Have a great day.